everybody, this is Jim, and uh, here with another entry in the 52 Chevy. You see, uh, we've made some progress. You remember from past videos, the engine is uh, going to get ready to be coming out here, so I've got that ready to go. Uh, well, getting her ready to go. She's not ready yet. There's still a few connections i got to get loose here, but uh, getting a lot of the ancillary stuff out of the way, a different wiring, uh, the radiators out, as you can see. That's pretty basic stuff. You wouldn't have any trouble with that, figuring that out on your own. Uh, for anybody who's interested, though, I thought very quickly I'd show you how to remove the uh, grill from this, and it's actually a, quite an operation. They're very well uh, built, and uh, one of the reasons I love these cars, but also I think the grill really is actually part of the structure of the vehicle. And so what I want to show you here, I'll get a little a little more light, is that uh, down in here, the the grill is actually connected, all, all the different pieces are connected with these pieces here, and they're actually riveted to these fins, including the center one here. Every one of these outer fins here, all three of these, one, two, three, are all actually riveted from behind. So this is all one piece, all the way across from right there, the other side of the passenger side, the far side of the passenger side turn signal, all the way aside to the driver's side signal. Signal. And so you can see I've already got the driver's side loose, and uh, I've also taken the center out right here. And there's just two bolts, one there and one there. And you can see those come out from underneath. You just use it's a half inch. Um, I just use a half inch socket and uh, removes those screws. It's basically just a uh, just a threaded bolt. I mean, just a um, like a kind of like a screw. I, I know there's a proper name for it. I'm totally blanking on it right now. But these are the parts right here. I'm just keeping them all in there. So you can see it's almost like a wood screw, like a lag bolt, I guess you'd call that. And um, but let me show you how those are connected. So we'll go behind the uh, passenger side wheel here. And let's get a little light shining up inside of here. And so uh, with the light shining in, you can see that there's this bolt right here that the top of my light is just touching right there. I'll lean that in. There's the top of the light touching it. And that one, and then there's a few others over here. All of those are connected to the back of the of the grill, including one way, whoops, way up there. So all those guys right up top there, those are all connected to that. And but all it is, again, it's a half inch. Make sure you got a good uh, six point six sided. Uh, socket will do a really great job of taking those out and then the whole grill assembly comes off and that's exactly how I did it on the driver's side and so I can do it now uh, on the passenger side. Because I love to prove to you guys that anybody can do this stuff um, I made a mistake I just got done telling you that these were half inch socket yeah no 7 sixteenths 7 sixteenths socket see you don't have to be that smart to do this stuff you just gotta be persistent so I find for my money, busting them loose as far as I can with the socket, getting them loosened up, and go until the socket stops ratcheting, and then I know that I can get it by finger from there. Also, for little fiddly things like this, I'm a big advocate of wearing gloves, but sometimes for little fiddly things like this, I just need to feel what's going on. So now we can take these out by hand. There's one. Two. Personally, I'm always excited when something that's 66 years old comes apart this easy. All right, there we go. Well, those of you who are really attentive will have noticed that um, I did, when I was showing you how to take out those bolts, I missed one. And there was one up high that I didn't get when I was uh, showing you. But uh, regardless of that, you go ahead and you can reach around and do that yourself. You don't need me showing you that again. But um, there are two bolts from the, underneath the pan inside the passenger side turn signal accessible from right underneath here and right there. And the two in the middle and then the two over on the driver's side. And that's it from underneath. Everything else is completely accessible from behind the fender. And then I haven't had it off, but it should just lift right off. There we go. And that's it. Now if you look over at the uh, driver's side of the car here, 
Uh, those of you who are, again, particularly attentive will see, you can see all the holes. So all of these holes are where the bolts are. The, the lag bolts came in from behind and that completely just disassembled this. And there's one here and one there. And that's it. Again, those are right below here. Easy to come apart, come apart real easy to work on. I love the way these cars are built. But now you can see I've got really easy access to the engine. I'll be able to lift that up and out without any real issues or challenges. And we should be good to go. You know, one thing I want to point out here is that uh, I am certain that there are people who are going to have a problem with the way that I'm building my car. And the only thing I can really say is, it's my opinion you should build the car the way you want to. I mean, after all, the car was available. Anybody could have bought it. But you bought it. It's your car. Build it the way you want to build it, man. Don't worry about what other people say. Don't worry about, you know, the critics out there. If you're a purist, there are going to be people who disagree with you, who think, no, man, a car isn't meant to just be colored by numbers, restore. I want to build it my own way. So they're going to disagree with you. If you're a rat rod guy, I guarantee you there are people who disagree with you. Build it the way you want it. It's your car. Somebody, a team of somebody's probably designed these back in the 40s, originally in the 40s, and then into the 50s, they styled them a little bit, but this car was mostly the same from 49 through 54. Somebody decided the way this was going to look. You got to decide the way you want yours to look. And you know what? I'm a big fan of the guy who goes out there and makes his own way. I love, I think these things are rolling art. I'm a huge fan of them. For me, I want to go with a more modern drivetrain. Even that engine I'm putting in it, it's out of a 70s combine. It's not super uh, modern, but it's got a lot more easily accessible parts. I could break down with that almost anywhere and get parts for it versus these old stove bolts. If I'm, you know, three states away from home and something goes wrong on this, I might be in a world of hurt trying to get a six-volt system back up and running versus a more modern 12-volt positive um, you know, it's a negative ground system as opposed to these being positive ground. So I really would encourage you to build a car the way you want it, man. And I'm going to be out there fighting for your right. Whether you're a purist and you want to build it pure and exactly the way they did it from the factory, I, I say go for it. If you're a rat rod guy and you're going to cut it up and do whatever you want to, go for it. It's your car. I just say, hey, above all, build them safe. Build it something that you're proud of. Build it something that you're excited about. But you want to be out there. You want to be on the road. You, mean, you want to be safe for yourself, for your family, for your friends. And you want to be safe for all the other people on the road around you. Make sure you got good brakes. Make sure that the, you know, the body's you know, solid. If you're, seeing, if you're doing Fred Flintstone trying to get her to stop or your feet are through the floor or you're seeing the floors you're going on the road, it might be okay for a test drive. But I certainly would never encourage you to do that for the long haul, man. That's just not safe. Build them safe. We want you to have a good time. Go fast. Have a good time with them. But please, we want to see you at the next car show. We want to see you at the next function. I want to see your videos, man. Send me videos of your cars. We love seeing that stuff. And, you know, whether you agree with my opinion or not, I'd still encourage you to, uh, to like the video and leave your opinion down below, man. We love hearing from you guys. We love hearing what you have to say. Even if we disagree, that's one of the great things about cars. There's a kajillion different ways to do it. I encourage you to do yours the way you want. Hey, you guys have a great day. Be safe out there. God bless. Have a great day. Love to see you at the next car show. Come up and say hey. Talk to you later.